can think we can walk, Father, like never before. God, we thank you, Father, just for how you're doing, Father, and how you're moving. God, we thank you, Father, that death passed us so far. God, we thank you, Father, that our mind is right. God, we thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Hit him on, Sire. Hey, hit him on, put him Come on. Let's tap into the spirit right now. Hey, my Messiah. We thank you, Father. Hey. That's it. Immediately, God says, I will move a thing in your life. Immediately, I can heal you. Immediately, I can restore you. Immediately, come on, somebody, I can elevate you. Immediately, head of Messiah, I can be there for you. Immediately, head of Messiah, I can do it, head of Messiah. Immediately, head of Messiah, have your way, oh God. Have your way on this day. Have your way on this day. Have your way with the believer. Have your way with our praise. Have your way with our worship. Have your way with our mind. Have your way, Father, with our thanksgiving. Have your way, oh God. Hit him, Messiah. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hey. Hey, yes, God did it. He did it again and he will do it again. Come on. He did it then and then he will do it again. Come on, who am I talking to? Hey. Hit my seat of Osiah. So God, we thank you, Lord, for how you're moving. Hit my seat. We thank you, Father, for shifting us in the spirit. Oh God, that we can show up right and we can show up right now. We thank you, Father, that we shall light and match in this hour. We thank you, oh God, for all that you are doing, Father. Death even got to behave today, Lord. We thank you, Father, that our families are saved. We thank you, God, that our mind is renewed. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that our homes are a lot better than what we left them, oh God. We thank you, Father, that when we come up out of this place, oh God, that, Father, we will have some strength in our back. God, we thank you that our children are covered. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, hit them on Shia. Hey, hey. We thank you. We honor you. Hit them on Shia. God, have your way. But now was to tap into the third realm, Father. Have your way, oh God. Allow our ear gates to hear you. Have your way, Father. In the name of Jesus, have your way. Come on, hit him, Messiah. God says, if y'all go there, hit him, Messiah. And hit him, Messiah. If you lift his name, he shall draw. Come on, hit him, I see it. If you want it immediately, hit the Messiah. I dare you to shift your mind, hit him, Messiah. And shift your worship. If you want it immediately, hit him, I see it. I dare you to do a thing different today. If you want it immediately, I dare you. How do I see it? Come on. Hey, somebody, I see it, Messiah. If you want it immediately, come on. You must not want it that bad. Hit him, Messiah. Hell must not be knocking on your door. Hit him, Messiah. You must ain't lacking nothing in this season. Hit him, Messiah. Come on. Hit him, Messiah. I ain't come to play today. Come on. Come on. I came to upset hell today. Come on. I came to save a life today. Come on. I came to renew a spirit today. Come on. Hit him, Messiah. Y'all got to do better than that. Hit him, Messiah. Have your way, Father. We thank you. Hit my Messiah. Have your way, oh God. Hit it if I see it. Let us press, Father. Have your way, Father. We owe you all that we have, oh God. It Messiah. Have your way, Father. If I don't see it, come on, hit him, Messiah. Have your way, God. We ask your Father to intervene with hell's plans. Have your way, God. It was another shooting just this weekend. Have your way, Father. Hit him, Messiah. Thank you, God, for receiving me. Hit him, Messiah. I thank you for the spirit of on time. Hit him, Messiah. Hit him, Messiah. I thank you, Father. Hit him, Messiah. Come on, we're going to stir it up in here. Hit him, Messiah. Hit him, Messiah. We thank you. Come on, hit him, Messiah. We thank you for the divine hour. Hit him, Messiah. We thank you, Father, for the poor. Hit him, Messiah. Hit That's it. Come on. Come on, you can't cook a pound 275. Come on. You can't cook a pound 275. You got to turn it up to 475. You can't expect the spirit to move. Hell, Messiah. If you don't give God nothing. Come on. It don't take all that. Yes, it does. Hell, don't play fair. Hell, Messiah, fair. Come on. It don't take all that. If you knew my life, 
We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. So have your way. That's it. God, have your way. Have your way, Father. Put the strength in his back, Father. Have your way, God. Allow his voice to capture this room. Have your way, God. Allow this voice to kill every demon, Father. That's lurking around this place. Have your way, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Come on. That's it. Y'all can do better than that. We thank you, Father. We honor you, God. We worship you, God. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're just trying to turn it up in here. Come on, if you ain't never been to the third ring of hot, I dare you to try to get there. This is one time you can ride somebody's coattail. Come on, I ain't never been to the anointed, but I dare to get there today. Come on, that's it. Come on, God, we thank you. We honor your father, we worship your Lord. You're such a gracious God. You're such a forgiving God. You're such a righteous God. Hey, You're such a healing God. Come on. Hey, you're such a providing God. Come on. You're the miracle worker. Come on. The way maker. Come on. You are him. Come on. We thank you. Come on. Hey. We thank you. We thank you for waking us up, Father. There was some that didn't make it today. So, Father, we lift up those that are on the prayer list. We pray for all those that are on the sick and shut-in list, oh God. And we even pray for the families, Father, and of those who just lost a loved one. We thank you. Come on. We pray for the Constellation Church. Father, that you shall bless them and keep them and cover them. We pray for the leaders at their church, Father. The shepherd gained his wings, Father. Hey. And God, we thank you for the church, Father. That if he left anything, Father, he left Jesus in that building. And God, we thank you for all that you have done, God. Don't allow us to take you for granted, Father. Don't allow us, oh God, to take this moment for granted. It ain't guaranteed that we will see another day. It's not guaranteed. Come on. God says, just take a moment, hit him, Osiah, and thank me, hit my Just take a moment. Yes, Lord, thank you. We thank you. Hey. So, Father, have your way. Saturate this place, Father. Have your way. Him, I see it. Do what it is that you do, Lord. Have your way. Hit him, Osiah. Have your way, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you for seeing another day. I thank you, Father, for your covering. I thank you, Father, for being so good to me, Lord. I thank you, Father, for giving to me, God. I thank you for your 
the covering God. I thank you, Father, for the angelic hosts that are assigned to us every day. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you've been real, real good to us, Father. I can't explain how good you've been, Father. I can't find a word in the dictionary of how good you've been, Father. I can't even tell my neighbor, Father, but if I had to do it, I to praise, oh God. All I can do is bow down to you, Lord, and tell you that you've been so good to me, Lord. And I'm gonna skin, I'm gonna
be fine. I know we were celebrating pastor, right? But also just celebrating God. Is that right? You know, Amen. Amen. and nothing's wrong or anything. But I was telling my, well, my niece, but I call her my daughter. She's my niece, but she's my daughter. But anyway, I told her when I got here, as I was driving, I had this sense of tiredness. Like I, I literally, I, I fell asleep while I was driving. It's never happened before. And I started thinking, I was like, well, my dad, he um, he deals with diabetes or whatever. And I was like, maybe my sugar's low or something like that. And I was like, but I was talking to baby girl. She said, no, that's not it. We, we ain't gonna even accept that. But I'm saying all that to say, for whatever reason, my mind this morning was fixed on God. Though. Like every time we come into the house of God, whether I got to sing or I got to play, whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm just always fixed on Him. Um, I'm very simple to the point about that. And so I summed it up when I was talking to baby girl. He's so cunning that he will do anything that he can to distract you from getting to the place where you're eager to be. Has anybody ever felt like that? In spite of what we go through, in spite of things that go on in our life, when our minds and our heart is fixed, we, we don't have to be the most perfect of people, but when our minds and our heart is fixed on Him, that is the number one thing that He is looking for. So never, 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 never get it in your mind or be distracted that he won't attack you. Matter of fact, when we wake up, expect the attack. Yeah. Amen. We wake up in the morning, we feel excited. Yes. Expect something. Now that may sound odd to most people, but when we're dealing with the enemy, right? Yeah. That's what his thing is, right? So watch this. Well, we're getting ready to go into praise and worship from here on out. I'm not saying this is not what's happening. I'm just giving uh, uh, some encouragement of some sort. Hopefully, that's how it comes off. Every time, whether we're here or you're at home, uh, you're in your car, you're at work, anytime you pump in your mouth to give God glory, I know Mother T's like that, for sure. Be excited about Him. Never sit down on Him. We don't know when the last time will be the last time. Does that make sense? I know it sounds cliche, right? But none of us really know when the last time will be the last time, right? So if you can, well, I know you can, so I'm not, I'm not going to even say that. Stand to your feet, right? And let's begin to give God glory. Yeah. So open up your mouth and pray. You may not be used to it, but he's deserving of it. It's not because you've done anything. It's because he's been everything. Hallelujah. 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 God, we bless your name today. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you nowhere. Hallelujah. King of King, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Almighty God. Hallelujah. this going to this search song the song is called anthem so i decided i was going to google because i never really thought about that before let me tell you what it says it says anthem it says two things a rousing or uplifting song identified with a particular group body or cause the second thing it says a call compensation composition based on a biblical passage for singing by a choir in a church service. Does anybody, did anybody catch when I said that? So when I say there is a composition based on a biblical passage, that means, so today as we sing this song, and as you see the words up here, I want you to grab a hold of it and declare to God what these words are saying. And that's what I meant early on when I said every time we come here, every time we open our mouth, whether we're in our car, at our job, in our home, in the shower, whatever that is, when we are giving God glory, we are declaring to him who he is, how marvelous he is. Don't ask him for nothing, but just tell him how much you love him, how much he means to you. That's an anthem. Okay? Is that all right? Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on. Oh, 
is my anthem. I will praise you now. Hey, say this is my anthem. This is my anthem. I will shout it loud. Oh, let me hear you. Say this is my anthem.
I will shout it loud. Come on, declare to the Lord. Hey, this is my answer. We declare, we declare it now. Come on, I want you to say, this is you to do this, watch this. I will bless the Lord at all time. Come on, sing to him. And his praises shall continually be in my life. That's word, come on. I will bless what? How long, how long? Uh, what the Bible says. is no matter what's going on, no matter how you feel, you may not know this song for real, but the word says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Don't come into church knowing the word, but don't act upon the word. I'm going to wait on you because I got all day. All right? Come on. I will, I will bless. Come on. Sing. The Lord. That's it. At all. Come on. I'm going to wait on you.
There's nobody that can heal your family. There's nobody that can deliver you like God. There's nobody that can free you like God. There's nobody that can mend your broken heart. There's nobody that can heal your wounded spirit.
many really love them today? How many really love him today? How many really love him today? Hallelujah. We come into the church to give God, to give God all the glory, to give God all the praise. On the back side of that, we come in here to celebrate our pastor on her birthday. Watch this. How many know that she's a praiser? How many know that she's a worshiper? So watch this. I'm glad you gave me that response. See if I can help us out some more. So everybody acknowledge that they, that they know she's a worshiper. They know she's a praiser, right? So if you can't get there for yourself... Praising the living God for your pastor.
gonna love on you. We gonna get a lot of pastors to come out here to preach our heart. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Somebody bless the name of the Lord.
in every part of my being, Father, so that you can increase. Put some strength in his back, Father, and some strength in his mind, oh God. Walk how you want to walk. Save who you want to save. Heal, oh God, who you want to heal. Allow the blind to see, the paralytic to walk, the deaf to hear, oh God. And break through the habit. So we thank you and we honor you, Father. Throw your weight around today. We thank you for reminding us that you love us so. That you gave your only begotten son. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so an amen. If you all can stand for the reading of the word, we'll be in Luke. I see it. Father, I have sinned against heaven. 
and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. Verse 22, but the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. We're going to go down to 23 and bring the fattened calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Actually, 24 is my birthday. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. Say again. again. And he was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 15 and below, you're out the door. If you're 15 and below, you out the door. If you're 15 and below, and you know you got to go. If you're 15 and below, you're out the door. Amen. The title of this message is called, This Covering is Much More Compelling and Greater Than the Compensation. This covering is much more compelling and greater than the compensation. In the scriptural text, we find Jesus giving a parable of the lost son who many refer to as the prodigal son. Now the word prodigal refers to one who has recklessly wasteful, uh, been wasteful of their money and possessions. Specifically in this text, the son recklessly wasted what he did not earn, however, what he inherited. Hear me, he wasted what he did not work for, uh, however, he uh, inherited the, his father's sacrifice. The text says, he said to his father, give me the portion of goods that fell, falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. In other words, he gave them all that he had. His children had come to him and asked him for his portions. And he gave them all that he had. Let's put it in today's time. That's like Denim coming to me and Stefan today. And he wants everything in our 401k, our stocks and bonds, and our checkings account. We give him all that we have today, even though we're still living right now. Based on the text, it seems as if the son no longer needed to be under his father's care and yearn for independence to move how he wanted to move. Now, what behooves me is that he thought he was grown enough to go out of his own or out of his father's house. However, he needed his father's resources to do so. Uh, are y'all reading this with me? He thought he was grown enough to step out of his father's house, but he wasn't resourceful enough that he needed his daddy's resources. Uh, he thought he had arrived at a point where he had all figured it out. He wasted no time leaving his covering. Say covering. Uh, I don't mind if I walk this. He wasted no time leaving his place of covering, his place of protection, his place of peace. He immediately packed up and went to a far country away from his home and his covenant. It is interesting to me when we receive kingdom possessions, we tend to move far away from the posture and the place that produced and covered us in that thing. We, for some strange reason, think that we are capable of handling and figuring it out on our own. We think that we can take kingdom possessions and enjoy it in a worldly way. Catch me. We think that we can take a God-ordained thing that was given to us and handle it in a worldly way. I see. Uh, we tend to forget our posture in, in, in that way. The world cannot obtain something for you, nor can it sustain it for you. Hear me, the world did not obtain what was in your life, nor can the world sustain huh, what's in your life. 
We tend to get in a prayer and pressing before the Lord. However, leave the place of prayer when the possession takes place. Prayer brought you to it. However, you move far away from it once you receive it. Light it up, Pastor. The text said that the prodigal son lacked, did not say that he lacked anything while staying under his father's roof. It didn't say that he lacked anything, hear me, while he was staying under his father's roof. It did not say that he was hungry and that he was perishing uh, in the spirit while he was under his father's care. However, what it did say is that when he moved away and from under the covering, there was a severe famine in the land. Are you all catching this? While he was in the father's house, come on somebody, he was covered, he was hit and he was fed and he had the covenant. But when he left out of his father's house, it says he endured a famine. It says that he endured a famine. The prodigal son didn't have the maturity, the accountability, or the discernment to be out on his own. He had arrived at a point where he had become hungry and in need. Now, according to the amdietech.com, it takes less than three to four hours to experience the feeling of being physical and emotional or hungry. Okay, Pastor, line this up. Well, the text refers to the prodigal son being physical hungry. However, in my humble opinion, I believe he also suffered from a spiritual hunger. Tell your neighbor, it was a spiritual hunger that he uh, experienced. It wasn't just in the natural. It was a spiritual thing that has happened. Have you ever been spiritually hungry? Hit him on I will walk it for you. He had a spiritual hungry uh, that he was experiencing in that far country away. See, when you allow yourself to go and grow hungry, you lessen your living. Catch this. Uh, when you allow yourself to go and grow hungry, you lessen your living. Let me walk this for you. It says that he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field of the swine and he was gladly had filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. However, no one gave him anything. The prodigal son went from fine dining down to desiring the pigs what they ate, huh? He went from eating Jeff Ruby's down to gas station hot dogs. Uh, when you go hungry, you open yourself up to lessening your standards of living. Are y'all catching this? Uh, when he was in his daddy's house, he, he didn't grow hungry. Uh -huh. uh, when he stepped out of his daddy's house and he had all of the compensation and all of the things that his daddy gave him, it seemed that he spent all of his money and he went hungry. See, one thing about when you get inheritance, you have to learn how to keep that thing and manage that thing and, and budget that thing. You have to learn. You have to learn how to save up from a, a rainy day. And how, come on, somebody. You have to learn to manage what God has given you. But the prodigal son got to a place in his mind that he no longer needed the covering of his daddy. So he said, just give it to me now. And he finds himself, the, the text says short, short, shortly after he, he, he became hungry. Uh, when you open, you allow yourself to go hungry, you open yourself up for this lesser living standard and lifestyle. You, you wouldn't typically eat at Red Rooster Truck Stop. However, this time, because you're hungry, you don't mind if you do. Uh, you wouldn't typically eat a bag of greasy chips. However, this time, because you're hungry, you, you don't mind if you do. You don't typically date this type of person. However, because this time you're hungry for some attention, this time you don't mind if you do. You wouldn't typically befriend this type of individual. However, since you desperately wanted somebody to be in your presence this time, huh? I don't mind if I do. You don't typically let anybody pray for you, speak in your life, prophesy to you. However, since you've been out of the covering of God, this time you don't mind if TikTok does. Huh? It's when you go hungry, you become desperate. Tell your neighbor, when you go hungry, huh? you become desperate. 
hungry. That's why they tell you you don't go shopping while you're hungry. Anybody experience going to the grocery store? You start picking up Twix and Snickers and, and chips and, and juice and everything that will kill you, Messiah. Uh, you overlook and oversee the vegetable aisle. You, you overlook and oversee that turkey. Come on, a uh, uh, ground turkey and you need some spaghetti strings and you need some watermelon. You want right to five bags of chips, two Twix, Gatorade that you don't never drink no better way, and five, come on, five packs of Kool-Aid and two pounds of sugar. Who am I talking to? When you, when you grow hungry, your eyesight gets a little different. When, when, when you grow hungry, you start to overlook things. When you, when you grow hungry, you ever said to somebody, I don't know if it was good or if I was just, huh? I, I, I don't know if it was good, Messiah, or if I was just hungry. Uh, so when, when, you, when you grow hungry, you, you, you can lessen your lifestyle. When you find yourself growing hungry, you lessen your living and your standards of life. You, you, your thinking becomes impaired. Your decision making is faulty. Your emotions are all, all over the a place. You become unreliable to hear from God. You begin to think you have it all together until the covering leaves you. How, how do I know that? Uh, well, it says in, in verse 16, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. What does gladly mean? I'm glad you all are asking great questions. It means he was willing to eagerly eat the pig's food. Now catch this. It's not customary for a Jewish person, person to accept the work that was offensive and unclean and let alone eat what the pigs eat. It was not customary for him to be doing works with the pigs and let alone to eat what the pigs ate. But he found himself out of his daddy's covering and he began to what lessen his lifestyle. He found himself out of his father's covering and he began to think differently that maybe it ain't that bad, maybe it don't taste that bad, maybe if I just get a little bit of what the pigs are eating, huh? I, I can sustain this, this appetite. Uh, he wasn't thinking clearly because he had become hungry. He didn't realize that his short-term decision had an immediate impact. He didn't realize his portion at home was just enough. I'll say that again. He did not realize the portion that he had at home was just enough. Sometimes we look online and sometimes we look next door. Sometimes we look down the street and think that the portion that we have is not good enough. The, the portion of what God has given us is not good enough. Have you ever thought about that God is only going to give you what you can handle? Have you ever thought about it? Hey, that God is only going to make you have access to what your mind and what your stomach can handle. So he didn't realize what was taking place at this time. He didn't realize his portion of what his daddy was giving him was more than enough. He received his blessings before it's time. He moved away and became hungry. Hunger creates crisis. Hear me, hunger creates crisis. How do I know that? Well, look at the book of uh, Genesis. It says in verse 25, chapter 25, verse 29. It says, now Jacob cooked a stew and Esau came in from the field and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with the same bread stew for I am weary. And in some Hebosiah translations, it says, I am hungry. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die. So what is this birthright to me, huh? Then Jacob said, swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. 
we must be careful allowing ourselves to grow spiritually hungry because we open ourselves up to be taken advantage of in the hour. I can't move until I am what said. Esau gave up his birthright for a pot of red stew. Esau allowed his temporary appetite to outweigh his eternal satisfaction. Uh, what was Esau's birthright? birthright? I'm glad you all are asking. In Genesis 27, this is what he's given up for a pot of stew. It says, verse 28, therefore, may God give you uh, of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Verse 29, let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who bless you. Are y'all catching this? Because he had a short term appetite, he gave up all that God was getting ready to give him so he can have a pot of stew. God is saying that we are in a season. We got to learn how to turn over our plate and sustain in what he has for us. I can't give up my birthright just for right now. I can't give up everything that God has for me because I can only see my right now. I can listen. If I grow hungry, I just got to hold on to myself and say, baby, see it on through because what I don't understand, I got to keep my mouth out for what I don't hear God saying. I must trust him uh, uh, in that thing. He gave up all that he had uh, for some ramen noodles, huh? He gave up all that he had uh, for how much is Raymond noodles? Uh, 29, 29 cents, five dollars, uh, five for eight. Oh, uh, it was saying he gave up all what he had uh, because of his appetite. Why are you telling us this? Well, when you allow yourself to grow hungry. You're less than you're living. You and I can't afford to go spiritually hungry. You and I can't ask for the inheritance and not get the lesson of God. You and I can't leave our father's house and survive the spiritual famine. Who am I talking to today? The prodigal son had lost his mind and almost lost his soul. However, the glory of the story is that he remembered, repented, and restored his relationship with the father. Uh, I'll say that again. He remembered, uh, he repented, and, and he restored his relationship with his father. The Bible says in verse 17, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have what? Sinned against heaven. And before you, and I no longer am worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. When he came to himself, it means when he literally returned to his right mind. And he realized the foolish behavior. He was able to identify how he got there and repent. See, there's many times where the enemy will have us so far away from God that we're in a foreign country. And when God is speaking to us, we can't hear it because we've lost the love language with God. There are many times that you will find yourself on an island trying to figure it out for yourself because him will say you was chasing the bag and not chasing integrity. There are many times you will find yourself, come on, fattening in the flesh, but you are draining in the spirit. There are many times you get ready to lose your mind because you have not fed yourself spiritually to understand this ain't season many times that God gives us stuff that we can't even handle there are many times that God will bless us with things and Messiah and we miscarry the mantle of that thing there are many times in Messiah that God is wanting to bless you but God is looking at your heart to see if you are mature enough to handle that thing <laughs> If you can't help Messiah show up seven days a week to prayer, then how am I going to purpose and process you for the next? Because when everybody else leave you, will you leave your purpose? Who am I talking to? Uh, help Messiah. If you, if you can't go without, then you're going to take everything that comes your way. If you never turn down 
nothing. You're going to know when something is good. Who am I talking to today? If you don't ever turn down something, you ain't going to never turn up in Jesus. I told y'all in Bible study how I walked away from a job, hit a Messiah that was offering me a whole lot of money, and I walked away because they lost integrity. Now, did I have another job the next day? I did not, but what I did have is my trust in the possessor. Who am I talking to? I didn't care nothing about the possessions that were afforded me. I cared nothing about the compensation that was before me. I cared about the covering that was over my life. This job I cannot put my trust. This job I cannot pray to. This job I cannot yield to. But I can put my trust in Jehovah Jireh. I can put my trust in Jehovah Nisi. I can put my trust in Jehovah Shalom. I can put my trust in the Alpha Father. I can put my trust in the White Maker. I can put my trust in the Miracle Store. I can put my trust in the Healer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because this world cannot obtain it for me. And it can't sustain it for me. Who am I talking to? The, the head of Messiah. The world cannot obtain what God has in heaven. And nor can the world sustain what he, huh? he, he placed on me. Uh huh. So you have to understand that the covering is much more compelling than, than the compensation. Uh huh. The covering is much more compelling than the com compensation. Huh? Uh, if, if my daddy was in my life, that, that was much more rewarding uh, than him buying me a pair of shoes and a car. Come on, who, who am I talking? If my father was in my life walking with me, that would have been much more compelling him standing and walking me down the aisle when I got married. Come on, somebody. Than a wedding gift. Who am I talking to? It, 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 oh, sorry. It's nothing much more compelling than the covering and the protection of God. Oh, sorry. When I don't understand, he tells me to trust the, it, It's much more compelling when you Y'all don't show up and I still hear him talking in my ear and saying, daughter, just trust me. It's much more compelling when hell, hell, Messiah is showing up. It's much more compelling when my father says, daughter, I've got my hand on you. It's much more compelling. Come on, somebody. And for me to have a big platform, come on, hit a sign, hit a sign. Then God to whisper in my ear and say that I'm saving a soul. It, it's much more compelling for God to tell me that the work that I'm doing is not in vain. It's much more compelling for me to be faithful over what He's giving me. Come on, than over what I see others is getting. It's much more compelling. And greater and I, and I have the covering of God it's much more compelling that the same God that tell me to walk away from a job to start a church during COVID huh? and to say keep going it's much more compelling that I can let my son go to the next chapter because the God that I serve is always covering he can cover in Cincinnati in Dayton and Toledo come on in Cleveland it's much more compelling And I trust the God that I walk with. But the prodigal son felt like it was much more compelling to take his daddy's earnings that he didn't work for. And, it was like, and he spent them that quick. <laughs> it, 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 it was like, that's why when your mom and daddy tell you not right now, it's because you can't handle it. That, that's why when, when, when the Alba father says not right now, because he's trying to develop something inside of us. That, that's why when Abba Father delays something, it means he's trying to develop something. Tell your neighbor, when he's delaying it, he's developing you. When he is delaying something, he got to develop something inside of you. So the, the prodigal son, he remembered who he was. And he remembered who he belonged to. He then remembered what he did. How did he get there? We don't a lot of times go back and track back. How did I get in this situation? How, how did I get attached to these people? How did I get in this relationship? How, how did I get here? Did it have any of my doing? Then, then when you, once you get that under control, you then repent. Uh, and then he returned 
back to the one that he knows. The only way we can get back on track in our relationship with God is turn back to God. If we are only in relationship for materialistic things and accolades, then we need to stop before we get ahead. It's the things we possess. It's not in the things that we possess, but it's in the possessor who we are in relationship with. His father received him as he was because his father knew his soul was lost and now he was found. Get a say. His father says, but the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. And God says there are a lot of believers. There's like people who are missing in the natural. And there are people who are missing in the supernatural. Just like they have a missing child's poster and website. There's a missing spiritual children website. And God is saying you have a choice today. To return your posture back to him. We all have a choice today to say, well, I am a believer, but how is your practice and your posture in the relationship with him? When God blessed you, you was dancing with the best. Now God is trying to sustain you and you're leaving with the rest. So today we have to understand that the covering of God is much more greater and compelling than the compensation that he can provide for you. How will you posture yourself in this hour? The delay that you are experiencing is only development stage. I can't move to a 10,000 square foot building if I can't handle a 3,000 square foot building. I can't elevate in my marketplace if I can't handle my right now. I can't elevate in the gifts of God if I mishandle, do not develop the current ones that he has given me. We have to stop wanting, head of Osiah, and not wanting to work what he's already given us. Please stand, head of Osiah. Head of Osiah. Head of Osiah. Head of Osiah. So, Father God, we thank you right now that you posture our hearts back to you. That we understand that you are the sustainer. You are the redeemer. You are the only way maker there is, oh God. And Father, if you make a way, you will pave the way. So have your way in our lives. Do what it is you want to do, Father. Move how you want to move. Renew our minds and bring us back to our remembrance of who you've called us to be. Let us know, Father, there's a greater purpose inside of us that's stirring, Father, and pulling and pressing. Let us know today, Father, that we have a move to make and we need to make it swift, swiftly. And as the prophets will say, Father, take heed to the instructions of you. So, Father, we thank you right now that we shall take heed to your instructions. Now, God, I know that there are some in this room that have gotten off path and they need to get back on path. I thank you, Father, that you will call them forth now so we can pray for them. Move quickly. Hit up Osiah. I thank you for those that have been off beat, off path, that you call them forth now, O oh God. So we can lay hands on them, hit of Osiah in this moment. I come against the spirit of flesh. And Father, I boldly move in the spirit and the authority that you have before me. God, don't you allow your believers to go out, Father, without... That ain't just for her. He says, it may sting you, but hit of Osiah is going to sustain you.
you. God says, I'm allow some things to happen to you, hell sight, so it can sustain your mind, sustain your strength, sustain your back, sustain your prayer, sustain your believing, sustain your faith. It may sting you, but it ain't going to kill you. So God, we thank you. I pray for anybody that didn't come up that should have came up, Father. I thank you, Father, that you shall tear, sight, tear that lying devil out of their mind. I thank you that this shall be their building season. I thank you, God, that you remind them that you have not forgotten about them and forgotten about the plans that you have called over their life. I thank you that their next shall be their best. I thank you, Father, that they shall walk in the oil, Father. They shall walk in the anointing, God, that their homes shall be better, that their families shall be better in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that you shall keep us from seen and unseen, harm and danger like never before. I thank you, oh God, in a Messiah. So have your way. Do what it is you want to do, Father. I pray that you anoint the hands that have healing hands. I pray, Father, in the Messiah, in the name of Jesus, that you anoint those that can speak prophetically. God, I thank you for those in the Messiah, in the Messiah, the builders that are in the room, God, that they shall build the plan, Father, walk the plan, believe in the plan. God, I thank you, Father, for those that are broken in the room, God, that you shall heal them in this season right now like never before. So God, have your way. I pray for those, Father, that may have been lost and now that they are found. I pray for the soul, God, hit of Osiris, that has not given their life unto you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you shall bless them right now. I pray for the soul that has to turn themselves back to you. I pray, of Osiris, I pray for the bruised up, Father, the broken, hit of Osiris, the lost, hit of Osiris. I pray for all of them right now. And if that is you, hit up Osiah. All you got to do is repeat after me. And say, Father, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And what you do to his power, you raise them on the third day. And you shall be the head chief in my life. Come on, say it like you mean. You shall be the head chief in my life. If you just said that, you're just giving your life to Christ or recommitted it. The second thing you need to do is get yourself in a biblical-based church that will cover you, keep you, correct you, love on you, elevate you, equip you with the word like never before. If you believe that this this church, hit a Messiah, hit. Raise your hand, Malaya. Hit up CA. You get with Malaya if you want to. Hit up Osiah. Walk it down. You can walk down now. Hit up Osiah. If you believe that you have been called here, hit up Osiah. We'll wait for you. Hit up CA. Hit up Osiah. You can walk down right now. Because it's compelling to have the covering. Amen. Amen. All right. God, we thank you that there's no one left behind. In Jesus' name. We're going to transition over to tithes and offering. Hit up Osiah. Hit up Osiah. Hit up Osiah. Hit up Osiah. You declare that we know that we know that Jesus loves us, right? Y'all still in y'all eyes there, right? Jesus loves us, right? Y'all still in y'all eyes there, right? We declare that today. So this is the portion where we can declare that love back to him by our giving. Is that right? All right. Come on, come on. So therefore, we know up here on the screen, we see there's five ways to give. We can give on the cash app. I always forget what that is. What is it? Chosen Ministries, dollar sign, Chosen Ministries. I don't know I forget that all the time. And then we have the Simple Give app, Chosen Ministries as well. And then we can see, you can text to give, or you can give by the Venmo, or you can give a strong check. Pastor says that all the time. Strong check. That's something that won't bounce. All right? I was looking so dead today. What is that? Come on. What, what's up? Come on now. Praise God, everybody. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Man. It's your birthday. I don't want to do that. Let's not do that, man. brother. I want to go. Jesus loves me. This I know.
back to you is to bless you in our giving, oh God. So we pray, oh God, that you would anoint those who are giving on today, that it would enhance your kingdom, oh God. And oh God, and, and, and give it back to us, oh God. We would pray that that would enlighten us, oh God, that it would uh, shake and mold and, and transform our own personal households and the things that we're asking from you, oh God. But first, knowing that we want to give it and offer it to you because it's our reasonable service, oh God. In Jesus' name. So come from everywhere you are and give. Hallelujah.